Thank you, Pastor. Everybody, praise the Lord. Your time has come. The mercy of God from heaven will rewrite the story of your life. No matter where you have been and no matter what has happened, a new thing is happening to you today. Release yourself into the hands of the Almighty God. He will rewrite the story of your life tonight. Give me a good Alpha location at the stage. Amen. Father, we well, thank you and bless your name. A glorious God, powerful God, mighty God you are. Lord, you love everyone here. Without exception, the young and the old, the poor and the rich. Lord, I pray that today the story of every life will be rewritten in Jesus' name. We come not by marriage, we come by grace. We come for mercy. And we pray your mercy will flow through and reach everyone tonight in Jesus' name. Everyone here, everyone online, everyone everywhere connected, mercy will write the story of every life. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. You can shout a better amen than that. God bless you. You can sit down. As we come tonight, talking about the glorious transformation. We're coming to Malachi chapter 3 verse 8. Malachi chapter 3 verse 8. For I am the Lord. I change not. The Lord is declaring to us, to you and to me, that our God does not change. His love, His mercy, His power, everything about God, nothing changes. It says, I am God. I change not. Then He says, Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. As we read that in the present day, for you and for me, therefore, ye sons of men, in the nation, in your city, in the places where you have come from, therefore, you are not destroyed. Therefore, you are not consumed. And therefore, you will not perish. I will not perish. How can we say that with confidence? Because he is the Lord. He changes not. And he says, as long as he's alive. And as long as you come to him, you will not be consumed. You will not perish. Whatever you've done, however you have gone, and how deep you might have been, no matter what, tonight, as you come to the Lord, Everything negative in your life, past, present, future, you wipe everything away. And the Lord God of heaven declares, and he says, I am God, I change not. The same thing we learn about our Lord Jesus Christ. Hebrews chapter 13, reading from verse 8. Hebrews 13 verse 8, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. Somebody give me a good amen. amen. Jesus, the Savior, the same, is still saving the worst, the vilest of sinners because he has not changed. You see healing. Is still delivering, is still blessing everyone that will come. He says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and tonight he will give you rest. 
He will give me rest. He will give who? He will give you rest in Jesus' name. Why? Because it's still the same yesterday, today, and forever. Tonight, as we begin a glorious transformation GCK crusade, we're talking about the unchanging God. The unchanging God. Three things we're looking at. Number one, about the unchanging God, his unchangeable power to save. His power to save unchangeable. And because of that, he saved others before. He will save you too. He forgave others before. He will forgive you too. He transformed all the lives before. Even the people that were worse than you. He transformed them. Your time has come. My time has come. Number two is unlimited power to heal. Whatever your sickness, I rejoice with you tonight at the night of your healing. Yeah. It will heal you. Yeah. Blind eyes, it will open. Yeah. Deaf ears, it will open. And those dumb uh, tongues will speak out tonight in Jesus' name. Yeah. You are there, they brought you in chains. Because you have problem mentally. Tonight, your deliverance has come. Its power is unlimited. And because of that, he healed yesterday. He's healing today. And he will heal every day of this crusade. This month, in God's own stage, in Abia, and everywhere, in Jesus' name. Number three is the undeniable power to deliver. Whatever chains you down, deliverance has come. Whatever is holding you, deliverance has come. If the worst of evil spirits has get, gotten you to the worst of situations. Don't worry, tonight, deliverance. Tonight, liberation. And we have his undeniable power. And your testimony tonight will be undeniable. Amen. Number one now. Number one is the unchangeable power to save the unchangeable power of God through Christ that saves us. We're looking at Isaiah chapter 63, and I'm reading from verse 1. It says, Who is this that cometh from Edom? And he says, With dyed garments from Bozra. It this that is glorious in apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength. He says, I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. The Lord assures us that he speaks in righteousness. And when he speaks in righteousness, he speaks in truth. He speaks in honesty. He speaks with faithfulness. And because he's righteous, because he's holy, because he's truthful, and because he's faithful, he's mighty to save. Mighty to save. If your sins are great, his power is greater. If your sins are deep, his power is deeper. If your sins are broad, great, broad, as if nobody has ever sinned like you before, his power is 
brother is higher, is deeper, is greater. That's why I'm happy you are here tonight. Your salvation has come. Yeah. As you look at the word of God, it says in Hebrews chapter 7, reading from verse 25, it says, Wherefore, he is able. He is able, even if we didn't read any further, that appears enough. He is able. He comes to you and he looks at you face to face and he says, I am able. This problem, I am able. This difficulty, I am able. And this sin that you feel so great, guilt and condemnation about, I am able to forgive and to save. Tonight, I am saved. Save for yourself. Tonight, I am saved. Because he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him. You must come as you come. There's no doubt in your heart. Will he save me? Will he not save me? He's able to save to the uttermost. I'm coming from the uttermost part of the earth. Is he able to save me? Is able to save to the uttermost. Hey, maybe you belong to an untouchable gang, untouchable, uh, you know, group of people. You've gone so far in sinning, in doing evil, they will not even talk to you. And as they are inviting people, come here, come there, and uh, you know God will do something better in your life, that people didn't even bother to get to you, but you came by yourself. Tonight, what you came for, you'll get more. Yeah. Wherefore, he is able to save them. Also to the uttermost that come to God by him. That's it. You have to come to God by him. By Jesus Christ. That's the condition. That's the condition. Maybe you have other things, you know, fetishes and whatever. You have to drop all those things because all those things cannot save to the uttermost. They cannot save you until eternity. But the only power that can save you until eternity is this power on the, of the unchangeable God who saves through Christ. And then he says, Seen he ever liveth, he ever liveth. Anybody that tries to help you. And he says, Don't go to God, don't go to Christ, don't go to anyone. I am here, I will save you. That person cannot live forever. You know them now. Those ones in their days of exaggerated pride they are thought they are there they are there they are there and you can always come to them now they are gone now they are dead because they cannot live forever on your street in your village in your town the only one that saves is saved generations past is saving generations today that only one cries he lives forever. He lives forever to make intercession for them. He's making intercession for you. He's praying for you already. God's Son, Jesus Christ, praying for you. And the Father will answer his prayer on your behalf. That's why tonight, as you come, you must come. You leave darkness behind and you come to his light. You leave your guilt behind and you come to his grace. You leave your own self-righteousness. I go to church. I did too many years before I became born again. Everybody goes to church somehow. I pray. I did too. I give offering. I do too. I give this and that. I give arms to the poor. I did too. But 
all those things could not save. That's why I will sing. Rock of ages cleft for me. Let me, me, let me hide myself in thee. Could my tears forever flow? Could my zeal no respite know? All that that I could do by myself, all that cannot save thou, and thou alone must save. So we leave all those powers behind that cannot save. We come to the Lord. You are coming tonight. And as you come, it will save you. It will forgive you. It will change your life, transform your life in Jesus' name. Because he is able. In my case, he is able. I about you. I said I about you. If the doctors have rejected you in your case, it will heal you. If the people you are helping, they say, come, 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 and we'll see their billboard or their signboard, and we get there, and everything is zero. Don't worry. No disappointment anymore. Yeah. You come to Christ tonight. It will save. It will heal. It will deliver. It will transform. It will set you free. Yeah. Is that right? Do you accept that? You know, the resolutions we make and we say, I will not do this anymore. We might even say, if I do that anymore, let this happen to me. And then one day, second day, two days, maybe we don't do that thing. The third day, we have forgotten ourselves. Because you cannot save yourself. Your resolution cannot save you. Your own power cannot save you. Your own ability cannot save you. And then we did that thing again. And not tell lies anymore. And then you find yourself telling lies. You slap yourself. The slapping cannot save you. You must still come to Christ. Only Christ will save you. I lost an amen there. Yeah. Sometimes you, you've done something. I sleep on the ground. I roll on the ground. I walk on pebbles. All that cannot save. Your suffering cannot save you. One has suffered for you. His name is Jesus. He suffered on the cross and he said, It is finished. All the other things you are trying to do and all the other ways you are trying to go, not necessary anymore. He is able to save to the uttermost. Tonight is the night of your salvation. Look at Luke chapter 19. Luke chapter 19. I'm reading from verse 9. In Luke chapter 19, verse 9. Now, before we get to verse 9, this man is named Zacchaeus. He had been a terrible sinner. He had been a wayward man. He had been a deceptive man. He had been a cheat, cheating everybody. He had been an extortioner, reaping where he did not sow. And everybody knew. They said, the fellow is dirty rich. Rich, but dirty. Rich. A lot of bad, bad things, evil things, corruption underneath the carpet of his house. And he carried that stigma all along. All of a sudden, he heard that Jesus is in town. And nobody invited him, so he wanted to see Jesus. Tonight, you will see the Savior. He will save your soul. He will forgive your sin. And so, because of the crowd, that is, multitudes of people, and he had lost his self-respect, he couldn't say, 
excuse me, let me pass, excuse me, let me, let me pass. And they looked at him, you of all people, you want to pass? What do you want to pass for? I want to go and see Jesus. Uh-huh. They are kind of people that Jesus will see. They did not believe that this man could be saved. Maybe you are there tonight. And people are saying, even if others are saved, you think you'll be saved? Yes, tonight you'll be saved. Yeah. And so he climbed up a sycamore tree. So that a Jesus will be passing by just to have a glance at Jesus. And when Jesus got there to that point of the tree, he looked at him. And he said, Zacchaeus. He knew his name, of course. Jesus knows the name of everyone. I'm glad he knows my name. I am glad he knows my name. And you know, Jesus did not look at him the way other people in the whole city looked at him. Other people, this man is a sinner. This man is evil. This man is dirty. He is rich, but we know the source of his riches. Jesus never pointed to anything like that. All Jesus was interested in, he wanted to write the story of his life. That's all Jesus is interested in about you tonight. Where you've gone, what you've done, what lies you've told, and all the dishonesty and all the stealing, yes, they're bad, they're bad. But what Jesus is looking at tonight is, I want to rewrite the story of this man's life. I want to rewrite the story of this woman's life. And if you let him, tonight is your time. Yeah. And so Jesus said, come down, because I must abide in your house today. And the man hastily got down and he said, Lord, he called him Lord. Already a change is happening. He said, half of my goods I give to the poor. That was the first time that man will remember the poor. His life already was being rewritten and mercy was coming to his life. And then he said, if I've taken anything by wrong accusation, the conscience of the man was waking up. His conscience had been dead. His conscience had been dormant. He never thought about what he did against anybody before. But as he met Jesus, like you are meeting Jesus tonight. I said you are meeting Jesus tonight. And then he changes the mind. He changes his thoughts. He changes his conscience. Jesus said, look at Luke now, chapter 19, verse 9. Jesus said unto him, this day is salvation come to this house. This day, when is your day? Yes. Say it aloud. Yes. The salvation of the Lord will come to your heart. Yes. And he will so change your life. When you were wicked, you will now be merciful. Where you were kind of a destroyer, you become a builder in Jesus' name. Where you were a deceiver, now you'll become an honest man, honest woman in Jesus' name. And the things you could not do before, you couldn't live right, you couldn't stand right, you couldn't talk right, you couldn't behave well, the grace of God will come to you. And the power of the Lord will come to you and there will be salvation, there will be transformation, transformation in everything you lay your hand upon. Now you'll be a dependable man, a dependable woman in Jesus' name. Yeah. Why? Because of his unchanging power 
to save. Let's come to number two now. Number two is the unlimited power to heal. Unlimited power to heal. That word unlimited means it's not limited to one person. His healing power gets to everyone. It's not limited to one kind of sickness. His healing power touches, transforms, heals every kind of sickness. It's not limited to one nation. His healing power goes beyond one nation and goes from nation to nation because his power to heal is unlimited. It will heal you on my, you know, good side over there, right side over there, at the back. Healing will come to you tonight. In the front, healing will come to you tonight. Look at Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8, reading from verse 16. When the evening was come, good evening. Spectacular evening. A special evening. For these people were reading about the evening came yesterday, nothing happened. The evening came last week, nothing happened. The evening came since they had been living in their community. But this special day, it was a special evening. Did you hear that one? And tonight, of course, we had an evening yesterday, an evening last week, but tonight is a special evening. Yeah. It's a different evening. Yeah. It's the evening when your sicknesses are rolled away. Yeah. It's the evening when that incurable cancer is healed this evening. It's the evening when that thing you have been battling, battling with, this is a special evening. All those things are taken away. It says, when the evening was calm, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils. Possessed with devils. That's what possess. When you possess something, you have that thing. And when something possesses you, that thing has you. These people that were brought to Christ, they were possessed by devils. The devil possessed them. And they possessed the devil. The sickness possessed them. And they possessed the sickness, the disease possess them, and they possess the disease. That's why people say, my headache, they possess it already. My cancer, they possess it already. They say, my diabetes, they possess it already. They say, my blindness will not allow me to go there. My, my, they call it my because it has become their property. All the property of the devil, sickness and disease and demons tonight go in Jesus' name. When the evening was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out the spirits with his word. He cast out the spirit with his, tell me, not with his oil, not with his water, not with his push, not with his touch, just his word. And that word is coming to you tonight. That word will heal you tonight. That word will open the blind eyes tonight. That word will get you out of that place the disease had possessed you and kept you bedridden. You will get up tonight in Jesus' name. 
and he healed all that were sick. I am healed tonight. I am healed tonight. When he came to the presence of Christ, they left, they left their sickness behind. You will leave your sickness behind. You will leave your torment behind. And all those seeds that have tormented your life tonight, when you rise up, you'll drop from your body. When we pray in the name of Jesus, and we mention that name at the end of the prayer, look and behold, you'll be free. I will be free. Whatever the sickness, I will be free. My mother will be free. My dad will be free. Say it for yourself. My children will be free. And all my loved ones, anywhere they are tonight, when you hear that name of Jesus, this special evening, all those things tormenting them will vanish away. It says in verse 17, it says that it might be fulfilled which was spoken, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken. Something had been spoken hundreds of years before. And that evening when they came, God said in heaven, what he had spoken is now to be fulfilled. Many people don't understand that. They think if we shout, if we sweat, if we roll on the ground, we'll be healed. It's beyond that. What God has written that he will do, that one evening will come, this special evening, and we will be where we are now because known unto God are all these works from the foundation of the world. He knows that this night will come, and the Lord says what he has spoken tonight will be fulfilled. Yeah. Healing fulfilled. Deliverance fulfilled. The power manifestation of the Lord fulfilled. That age might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, Himself shook our infirmities and bear our sicknesses. Himself. Who is that Himself? Jesus is going to take your infirmity of you. Your disease of you, your torment of you, your sleepless night of you. Because tonight is the night of the power of Christ manifested as it was spoken. Tonight you are healed. Tonight I am healed. Look at number three here. Number three is undeniable power to deliver his undeniable power to deliver he has the power and now he comes to deliver he will deliver you i said he will deliver you in mark chapter 5 i'm reading from verse 1 and they came over Unto the other side of the sea, into the country of the gatherings. The Lord in chapter 4 told his disciples, He said, Let us pass over unto the other side. All those disciples never knew what Jesus knew that on the other side there's somebody waiting for deliverance. That's why we have now crossed over to this other side. We have been in a river stage. We have been in Lagos stage. We have been in Taraba this year. But now we come to your side. Yeah. And the reason Christ crossed over is because of this man 
that needed deliverance. The reason we have crossed over, crossed over here to you face to face is because the Lord has determined that you must be delivered from every power that holds you down. Tonight, you are delivered. Tonight, you are set free. The yokes in your life, they are broken in Jesus' name. Look at verse 2. In verse 2, and when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit. Unclean spirit. Now, you see the unclean spirits, they do many, many things. Some unclean spirits make people unclean. They make them have unclean thoughts, unclean life, unclean habits, unclean behavior. As you come to Christ tonight, he'll drive that unclean spirit out of your life. Some unclean spirits make people blind, make people deaf, make people dumb. They brought a boy to Christ. And the Bible says he had an unclean spirit. And Jesus had the Father since when had this been on him? And he said, from a child. And sometimes he'll throw him into the river, into the water to drown him and sometimes into the fire to burn him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us, your help has come. Yeah. Not that if you can do anything, if you can only believe all things are possible tonight, it will deliver you. This man with the unclean spirit had such extra sensitive power, extra, extra sensory power. The binding of chain will break the chain. He'll go to the great side. He will cut himself. That's another activity of evil unclean spirit. But now Christ has come and every activity of the unclean spirit is taken away from your life tonight. Yeah. Just come. Just come. Just come. He'll save you. He'll forgive you. He'll change your life and every chain will be broken out of your life. Yeah. Look at verse 3 here. In verse 3, who art is dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him. No, not with chains, unclean spirit. But the activity of that unclean spirit in this fellow is that he was so physically powerful that no power could tame him. You look at your life. Is there something there that goes beyond your human power? You wanted to live right, live straight, talk right, talk straight. There's another power that controls you. You said, I wish I could be as gentle as I ought to be, as honest as I ought to be, as good as I ought to be. But the power beyond your own resolution decision will not allow you to have such goodness or gentleness. Chains cannot bind you. The chain of the law, the chain of constitution, the chain of whatever around you could not control you. Welcome to night. The power to break all your chains, that power will be manifested. Look at verse 4. In verse 4, because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains 
had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broke him in pieces. Neither could any man tame him. School could not tame him. Prison could not tame him. Law enforcement agents could not tame him. Parents could not tame him. And the people that are hired by the government or by the family to tame him, none of them could do that. But there's a power coming from heaven today. Even though you are beyond the power of the law, the power of the prison, the power of the correctional institutions that nobody could tame you. Praise the Lord Christ will take over your life tonight. Everything, all those institutions have failed that they couldn't set you right. Christ will not fail in your life. Christ will not fail in my life. Amen. Amen. Look at verse 5. In verse 5, and always night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. He was feeling the pain. That's why he was crying. He saw the blood coming out. This is my blood coming out. If it continues coming out like this, I might lose all my blood and die. He was crying. And yet, even though he cried, he could not control what made him to be feeling the pain. You know, there are people, they know what they are smoking is injuring them. And they are crying. And they're saying, why well, am I like this? Why well, am I like this? And yet, they keep on doing it. They know what they are drinking is killing them. Yet, they keep on doing it. A power beyond their power brings the addiction into their lives. They don't want to, yet they do. But as a power I come to introduce to you tonight the power, undeniable power of Jesus Christ. It will deliver you. In verse 6, verse 6 were told, but when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him. Verse 7. And cried with a loud voice and said, what have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of the most high God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. Uh, do you understand what's taking place here? The man, human, he ran towards Jesus. A power, a voice out of him spoke and said, what have I got to do with you? Jesus. It was a double personality. Double personality. Running to Christ. I love Christ. I want Christ. I want salvation. I want deliverance. I want healing. I want his goodness. Running to Christ. That's one part of his personality. The other part of his personality, what have I got to do with religion? What have I got to do with Jesus? What have I got to do with prayer? What have I got to do with crusade? What have I got to do with Jesus, the chain breaker? You see, that evil spirit was the one talking inside him. That's why when I say, if you want your sins to be forgiven, if you want the salvation of the Lord, raise up your hand. One part of you says, that's you. Raise up your hand. And you want to raise up your hand. The other part says, pull that hand down. What do you want to be saved? 
we're here. We occupy the throne of your heart. We occupy your personality. Why will you leave us and then go to Christ? Don't listen to that other voice. You raise up your hand. I want Jesus. Somebody there tonight, you want Jesus. I want Jesus. The Savior, I want him. The healer, I want him. Do you? The deliverer, I want him. Whatever other voice, whatever other influence may say, don't do that. You overlook them. You come to Jesus in spite of them. Amen. Amen. And you'll be saved. Look at verse 8. In verse 8, for he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. Look at verse 9. In verse 9, and he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. Uh, can you think of a man being controlled by even five human beings, five men? This one says, go here. Another man says, go there. Another man says, go there. If a man is being controlled by, diff by five different men, his life will not be straightforward. His life will not be under control. He wants to obey A. B said, no, go this way. He wants to obey B. C said, no, go this way. And he wants to obey C. And uh, D says, go this way. That man will just be like, you know, a ball, a football, that the key care and there. And his life will never reach the goalpost. But this man controlled by a legion. More than 2,000 evil spirits. And those evil spirits, they have different desires and different control and different push and different, you know, utterance that they say, no wonder the man was like that. But in one sentence, all the legion that may be controlling anybody's life tonight, they're gone in Jesus' name. Look at verse 10. In verse 10, and he besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country. It's not the man now talking, it's the evil spirit talking, it's the unclean spirit talking. And the man was just, it was just the habitation of those evil spirits. He wasn't in control. And he was saying whatever they were saying, the man did not know there was an abyss. There was, uh, you know, a bottomless pit. There was anything, there was any torment that those evil spirits were avoiding. The man did not know. And he kept on talking, uh, but the man said, stayed there. He wanted Jesus. When Jesus said the final thing, your deliverance will come. Yeah. Look at verse 11. In verse 11, now, there was great, there was there near unto the mountains a great herd of swine feeding. Verse 12. In verse 12, and all the devils he called them unclean spirits. Now we know who they are. They were devils. Devils. Every devil will come out of your life. You say, I don't have a devil. Well, maybe you don't. The man did not know he had a devil. All he knew was that he had this stone with which he was cutting himself. What do you have? I have a stone. What do you do with that? I cut myself. How about devil? Devil, I don't know that word. I was unclean spirit, unclean spirit. I don't. The man did not know that what pushed him to be cutting himself, what pushed him to be destroying himself, what pushed him to be committing slow, gradual suicide was the devil. The man did not know, but Jesus knew everything Jesus knows in your life that should not be in your life tonight. They come out. Every power 
that will not allow you to have control over your own life and they control you to drive you to perdition tonight you're delivered in jesus name there is this undeniable power that delivers and remember jesus kind of same yesterday today and forever it says in verse 13 in verse 13 and fought with jesus give them leave jesus said go jesus at all cost wanted the man to be free here were two thousand pigs here is one man, and Jesus counted the man more valuable than all the 2,000 pigs. So he allowed those ones to perish to save one man. Everything you can think about on earth, Christ counts you more valuable. And he will save you. I said he will save you. Look at verse 15, in verse 15, and they come to Jesus and see him that was possessed, no more possessed. When Jesus comes into your life, you're no more possessed. When Jesus heals you, you're no more sick. I thought you'll say amen. And when Jesus takes over your life tonight, you are no more a sinner, you'll be saved. Yeah. And he said, they saw him that was in the past tense, possessed with the devil. And at the legion, sitting and closed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. Everything experts are trying to do in that man's life and they were not able to tame him jesus christ was one word spoke all those evil spirits they let bad character let uncontrollable character let suicidal actions cutting himself everything led with one word of christ it was now in his right mind in his right mind your own time has come where are you your own time has come he'll forgive your sin he will save your soul he will heal your sickness he will deliver you from every torment and this is your special evening it will happen yeah. where are you it will happen Amen. everything shakeable will be shaking out of your life yeah. everything tormenting will be driven out of your life yeah. the good mercy of the lord will start a new story for your life tonight Amen. Amen. It's bowed and eyes closed. It's bowed and eyes closed. Your time has now come. My time has now come. You want the Lord to forgive every sin you ever committed in your life. You want the Lord to set right every wrong you ever did in your life you want the lord to give you a clean slate and wipe off blot out every dirty thing that had been there in the past wherever you are raise up your hand new life is beginning for you now do that now do that now don't let that other voice say, put down your hand, raise up your hand, and say, Lord, here I am. Lord, here I am. Forgiveness is coming. Salvation is coming. Your true self will now come out, and you have the right mind. If you're raising up your hand, stand up, stand up for Jesus, stand up wherever you are. You're saying, 
I come. I give my heart, I give my life to Jesus. And I want him to forgive me. I want him to save me. I want him to transform my life. I want him to tame my life. God bless you for standing. Your miracle of salvation is coming to you right now. Anywhere you are, raise up that hand, raise up that hand, and stand up and say, Lord, here I am. Stand up right there, say, Lord, here I am. I'm praying with you now. Remember, when we mention the name of Jesus, all your past will be totally forgiven. Say, Amen. Amen. And then a new life will begin. Raise up that hand. As you are standing up online, wherever you are, do the same. The Lord wants to rewrite the story of your life from this beginning event tonight. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you because you have unchanging power to save. And Lord, we come on behalf of these, our brothers and sisters, our sons and daughters. Lord, we're asking, forgive all their sins in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray, save their soul in Jesus' name. Every bad thing of the past, forgive and wipe everything away. Set the captive free. And Lord, I pray the bad habit that possess them, that controls them. I pray, Lord, you break the power of those bad habits in Jesus' name. Come into their hearts. Come to stay. And come to help them into the new life. Lord, we well, thank you that your salvation has come to them now. Your forgiveness has come to them now. Give them assurance they are forgiven, they are saved. In Jesus' name we pray. Yeah. It is done. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Keep on standing. Our counselors are there. And they'll help you and ask some details from you. Give them the details they're asking. We we'll ask uh, moderating overseer tonight to help us during this period before the miracle, deliverance, healing, prayer. We thank God for the way God has spoken to us and the prayer of his servant leading us to salvation. Our counselors are there. Please keep your hands up so that we will see you. Give them correct information and then give them your cell phone number. Our counselors, please write in capital letters. Write the names in capital letters. Write legibly, correctly. Please, in all the places, all the sites behind, in the middle, in the front. Our counselors, please get across to them. Keep your hand up if the counselor is not by you yet. Please, our counselors, there are hands by my left side here in the front. Please, let's move fast. Let's move fast. This is The evidence of glorious transformation. So please keep your hand up until the counselor gets to you. Please give him your name correctly, your address correctly. And so the counselors, please write legibly. Include their cell phone numbers. There are hands on the left side. Please, our counselors, make sure you are not Away from the counselors now. Quickly get to them. Let's do that very fast. Please write in capital letters. All the information required in that 
decision slip. Let's do that. For, please, if you have not a counselor near you, keep your hand up, please. Make sure you're keeping your hand up. And for our all online audience, if you have given your life to the Lord, after the prayer of our Father and the Lord, this evening, there is a link there below your player. Please visit it and fill out the form so we can assist you further in your new work with Christ. Our online audience, please, you click the link, you fill out the form there. It will help us to help you further. Also, if you are listening via radio or television and you have given your life to Christ tonight, please send your name, cell phone number, and your location address via SMS, a text, or WhatsApp. Please send to this number I will call now. If you listen via radio or television, please give us your cell phone number, your name, number, location, and address via text message or WhatsApp. Please, to this number I will call now. Plus two, three, four, nine, one, four, four, four. That's triple four. Nine, two, six, three. I repeat. Plus two, three, four, nine, one, five, triple four. That is four, 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 nine, two, six, three. Send a WhatsApp message to this number or a text. There will be a special meeting. We call it Lunch Hour with Jesus. It will be here on this ground tomorrow by 3 p.m. All of us who have made decision to follow the Lord, you're giving your life to Christ after the message of God's servant, and you have taken this decision, please, it will be a special time to meet with you tomorrow, a lunch hour meeting, 3 p.m. here. Please make sure you are here. We shall be at the tent near us here by 3 p.m. tomorrow. We will meet you there. Make sure you do not miss this special meeting. We shall see you tomorrow for this lunch hour program. Please, I cancel us very quickly. If we are true, you let us know. You wave your hand at us. And for those of us in other places, we are going to have Converse Rally on the 5th of May in all our churches globally. In all branches of Deeper Christian Life Ministry and all the churches that have joined hand in this program. More details about this will be sent to you. Our pastor will be delighted to have you join this special banquet. And I tell you, you have started a wonderful work with Jesus that the enemy can never stop you anymore. So this banquet will be on Sunday 5th. For us here in our bar, in all our locations, we shall be getting across to you via your decision slip. The time will be 3 p.m. in all our headquarter churches here. Tonight, as God's servant will pray for us, God will perform great miracles. So if you receive your miracle, please. I know God is already touching you or touch you. 
We would like to share your testimony for online audience via your cell phone number you sent to us via WhatsApp. You visit the address there on your social media platform. You can also record a video of your testimony and share with us via WhatsApp and Telegram. Before Father the Lord comes up, we want to be sure that all of us who have taken decision to follow the Lord, serve him, live for him. As he has forgiven you, saved you, make sure you do not hurry away. Wait. It's a great thing God wants to do for you. Cancel us, please. We want to be sure no one is left out, those that have taken decision tonight. And if we are done with filling the forms, please, can we indicate by waving our hands to us? Okay. On that column. Can I see the hand on the right side? Please, if cancel us, we are done. Let's see the hand. What about... The left side. Our counselors on the left side. Are we done? Please no. One that has given his life to Christ tonight should be left out. Get all the information. And so that we can now do the follow up with them. Left side. I'm here to see. They cancel us hand and flag there, please. Because very soon, God's servant is coming to decree God's miracle upon your life. So be ready, be expectant. And tonight, God will roll away that sickness. God will break that yoke. God will touch you. And that sickness will no more be there. You are well positioned for great miracle tonight. Everywhere, both here at our location and everywhere we gathered for this program. Very soon, God's servant will be coming. Make sure you're ready. I cancel us quickly. Let's gather the decision slip as instructed. And then it will be time for God's touch on all who are sick. Whatever the illness, blindness, you have stroke, your limb, your dump, you speak, deafness we go, blindness we go. When God's servant prays, we shall listen and hear testimonies of great things God will do here tonight. My right side, the people there, are we done with them, please. I want to see you wave. Confirm. Okay. Left side. It's all right. Very soon, I find in the Lord, God's mind instrument will be coming. And as he makes the decree of freedom, healing, deliverance upon you, it will be confirmed. Church, I said it will be confirmed. Great miracles will take place right now. Very soon, our Father and the Lord will be coming. And God has prepared him, anointed him for your healing, for your deliverance, for breaking yokes and setting captives free. That's why he's here. And thank God, God has made it possible that the enemy didn't stop you from coming here. Praise the Lord. I can't sell us. Are we done, please? At the back. All right. The extreme back. I can't sell us. Head there, please. Back, behind. Behind, on the right side, please, behind. On the right side. Okay. Behind, behind. 
The second line on the right side, I'm here to see the flag. Please, let's be fast. No one that has taken this decision tonight should be left at counselors. Please, make sure everyone is taken care of. I'm here to see the flag on the second row. On the right side, behind, far behind. Yes, the front. Okay, okay. What about the middle row here? Behind. On the left side here, behind. All right. Cancelors, are we done? If we are done, can you wave your hand at me? Cancelors? It's all right. It's all right. Praise the Lord. It's going to be a time of miracles tonight. Everybody shout miracles. It will happen here tonight. Thank you, sir. Praise the Lord. Your time of miracle has come. Healing. Deliverance, total liberation. Once we mention the name of Jesus, it will be done in your life. You want healing, you want deliverance, you want a miracle. Any way you are, just raise up your hand. We are praying now. And after the final amen, check up yourself. All those things are gone. Father, in the name of Jesus, we well, thank you because we know you are still the same. And because you are the same, you will heal the sick. You will deliver the oppressed. You will set the captive free. Lord, in your mercy, compassion, manifest your power now in Jesus' name. Deliver everyone. Yeah. Touch, transform every life. Yeah. And I pray that every sickness, every disease be removed right now in Jesus' name. Yeah. To the left, to the right, to the back, to the front. Anything that is called sickness, anything that is called disease, anything called attacks, affliction of the devil, Break them now in Jesus' name. Yeah. Manifest the power right now. Yeah. Give testimony to everyone not right now. Lord, the same yesterday, today, and forever, do it. Thank you, Lord. It is done. It is done. Confirmation in every life. In Jesus' name we pray. Check up yourself. You'll see the healing, the miracle right there. It 